thought you could be, Moon whispered, then realized she'd spoken aloud when Sora looked up and blinked at her. She turned toward the wall and thought, Dogstock had lived over 2,000 years ago. I know, he sighed. I've been asleep a long time, apparently. I suspect this bracelet was supposed to keep me that way forever. So what happened? Moon asked. Why are you awake now? It's broken, he said. After 2,000 years, almost anything becomes weaker. Something must have jarred it and snapped it off. The earthquakes? Moon wondered. There was a comet six months ago. As it passed by, there were a lot of earthquakes and strange weather. That's when I woke up, he said. So you're probably right. Moon hesitated. Six months ago was also when her nightmares had started. The ones about Jade Mountain falling. Was she seeing visions of something that would ultimately be caused by Darkstalker's awakening? I'm not actually a monster, no matter what the scrolls and ghost stories say, he said. Can't you tell? Where are you? she asked instead of answering. That I don't know. Somewhere dark, covered in stone. I can't move, I can only... think. He let out an odd sort of chuckle. <laughs> Perhaps you can see why I was so pleased to find you. I can hear others, but no one else can hear me. Makes for a lot of very boring, one-sided conversations. She didn't know what else to say. She expected, well, another dragon like her. Someone she could meet and go flying with. She had not expected to be talking to the legendary monster of Nightwing Nightmares. I'm not a monster, he said again quietly. It seems history has painted me that way. But perhaps that's what happens when you disappear before you can tell your own story and only your enemies are left to finish it. Or your best friends turned enemies, apparently. Moon rolled back to the Darkstalker section of the scroll. A handsome dark face stared regally out at her. He had the silver scales in the corner of his eyes, too. Formidable dragon, Darkstalker said with mild amusement. I suppose that's true. But it is not my fault I was born with these powers. I think you know something like that. I've never plotted to steal any thrones, though, Moon pointed out. Or killed my father. I think you would if you had had my father. I saved the tribe from him, Darkstalker argued. He was a lot worse than I am. This scroll's version of the story is highly oversimplified. As for being king, why not? Just because we've only ever had queens, does that mean a king is impossible? Why would I have all these gifts if I wasn't supposed to use them to lead and protect the tribe? It felt as though he had suddenly seized her mind in an iron grip. Moon winced, touching her head. Listen, Darkstalker said. I can see the future, but not just any future. All possible futures. Do you understand what that means? I could have guided the tribe along the best path to safety and glory and power and everything else. At each crossroad, I would have known the right thing to do. I loved my tribe, Moon Watcher. I would have been the best ruler they'd ever had. I know it. I saw the futures where I was king, benevolent and beloved, married to clear sight with six little dragonettes of our own. Those were possible. 
They could have happened if anyone had faith in me. He paused, then went on. She saw them too. Clearsight had the gift of prophecy as strong as mine. She knew these futures existed, but she also saw the ones where I turned toward evil, destroying instead of protecting. She didn't believe me that I could avoid those paths. In the end, I guess she didn't believe in me after all. I wondered what happened to her. There was a really another long pause. This is going to sound weird, Moon offered, but I kind of want to give you a hug right now. Darkstalker barked a laugh. How did she surprise you then? Moon asked. If you could see all these futures, how did she trick you with the bracelet? I had too much faith in her, he said. I saw the possibility that she would betray me in more than one future, but further down the line. I didn't want to believe it, so I never studied those paths, just as she was supposed to stop looking down my darker paths as well. Up until the last moment, even with visions of blackness pressing against me, I still thought I could change her mind that I could talk her into trusting me so we could fly into our bright, perfect future. He made a kind of growl, but Moon couldn't tell what was behind it. Bitterness? Revenge? Despair? Loneliness? I never saw any of this back then, though, he said. I suppose prophecy doesn't extend 2,000 years forward. Not even for me. So you don't know what happens next? Moon asked. All I can see is darkness, he said softly. All I can do is hope. Hope for what? Hope for someone to set me free. You, specifically. Moon jumped up, dropping the Animus Histories scroll. Starflight turned his head toward her, and Sora blinked up in surprise. Sorry, Moon said. Just had a thought. How can I set you free? She cried. I'm nobody. I'd have no idea where you are, and you're... you're... The most dangerous dragon in Perea history, Darkstalker asked dryly. You shouldn't believe everything you read, Moon. Even if I did agree to it, Moon thought, which I'm not saying I will, how could I? There is something I need, he said. Moon, Kinkajou called, sticking her head into the library. Did you hear the three gongs? We have to get to history class. Sora, you too. Sora scrambled to her feet, dropping her scroll with a clatter and fumbled around trying to roll it back up. Moon picked up the Animus Histories, wondering if she could skip class somehow. She kind of wanted to keep talking to Darkstalker, which would be hard to do in a cave full of dragons, all thinking at the top of their brains. Hi, Starfleet! I'm super excited! Kingaju said. I don't know anything about history! I have a million questions for the webs! Like, what's the scorching? And is it true there used to be scavengers everywhere? And who started the Talents of Peace? And what's the big ice cream tragedy of the past? And... A scream of terror suddenly echoed through the tunnels. Help! Somebody shrieked. More screams and the clamor of running dragons joined the tumult. The Skywing! She's here to kill us all! 